So our next presenters are going to start us off with a workshop for a few hours this afternoon. Please join me in welcoming Helga Stefan and Niklas Morelius. Right, so uh, we have brought these two uh, cameras, special cameras today that me and Niklas have made. And inside these, it says uh, what appears in the mirror may be different from reality. But some of us can see it from reality. So inside these objects is uh, hidden cameras. Uh, and they can be used to photograph, which we will be doing later on in the workshop to try these out. Uh, I'm going to. And these cameras was uh, created for an exhibition where um, I was invited to uh, exhibit at Gothenburg Art Museum. And uh, it was an art piece called Mirror Me. So I'm going to put the cameras into context a little bit, where they were what they were created for and how they came into being. Please feel free to interrupt me if I... Uh, so I was invited to do uh, an intervention to work with the permanent collection at the um, Gothenburg Art Museum. And uh, after walking around the museum, it was quite intimidating seeing pieces by Picasso and all these great artists. So I decided to work with the uh, self-portrait collection, um, which you can see here. Um, it was um, it's very much like a time capsule, because it hasn't been updated from the um, 1950s, I think the last portrait is from. And it was collected by this man called Jarno Gabrielsson. He was an uh, avant-garde art collector in Sweden from a very simple background. He was a postman, and then he started the collected um, um, self-portraits. And he also had another collection with um, Russian constructivist art pieces with a lot of Bauhaus artists. And unfortunately, when he died, they sold that collection. So that is a lost collection. And now only this self-portrait collection exists. And it was donated in 1950, and uh, here it says that it contains 64 uh, art um, pieces, but now it's actually 68. And this was when he died, and this was one of his favourite art collections. And um, he very much wanted it to stay alive, so he wanted the museum, and the daughters also wanted the museum to... to sorry, this... Um, want the museum to continue to buy self-portraits because they realized that would kind of um, the way of creating self-portraits would be different today than what it was in the 1950s. Um, so um, I decided I wanted to work with mirror at the same time as I did this art piece. I also discovered on the, um, on the camera where you have the selfie um, mm -hmm. image which flips on his own, so you kind of take an image and then it flips it into a, a photograph and he, the camera in itself acts as a mirror while you're using it. And this together with the whole idea of a lot of these portraits that were painted through using mirrors um, wanted me to work with mirrors to kind of um, show the identity of the people also in the space when you were in there as you would have kind of a glimpse of self-portraits while you're walking through the sculptures in the exhibition. And the forms of the sculptures are, were inspired by the collection that was uh, sold out, that they didn't exist anymore. And that collection had pieces by o Oskar Schlemmer, Kandinsky, and very big um, artists. Uh, so the shapes and forms of the sculptures were inspired by those in very much the Bauhaus uh, movement. And then they are also um, mirroring each other so they are exactly the same, but some uh, parts it goes out more and less, and then mirroring each other, and then it was a floor piece as well. Um, so it was also, the self-portraits were kind of reflected in the sculpture, so they were kind of watching you from a lot of different angles within the space. Um, the artist, the white 
good-looking male dressed up for the occasion, wearing a blazer or a uniform looking into the mirror. Yesterday you uploaded seven images, only because you couldn't choose which one you re really capture that magic moment with your friend. The camera beeps, one, nine, one, three. And you are wondering if she's really standing right next to you or not. Who is watching me and why can't I see myself? So a lot of these portraits, there's 68 portraits where two of them are female and the rest are male and they're all Caucasian. Um, so there's not very much variety in this collection. And uh, one of the ideas was that I wanted the participants and, and the viewer that went to the museum to start create their own um, self-portraits and expand the collection because one of the um, things that was written in the deed letter to the museum was that uh, Jarno Gabrielsson really wanted them to continue the, ex uh, the collection and uh, so I wanted them to invite the viewers to create their own self-portraits while visiting the museum through these cameras where you can't actually see what image you're taking um, but by using the cameras, you give up the right to the image and it's given to the camera itself and it's used for a publication and to expand the collection at the art museum. And uh, here you can see one of the visitors using the camera. So you could use the sculptures as a kind of sounding board to, for the camera to photograph yourself um, while you were in there. And here you can see the two only female artists, uh, is Katja Kat Kotter and uh, Sigurd, Sigurd Mor, oh, what was the name? Jorden Sitje Mor. Um, and because it was only two female artists, I placed them above the sculptures to give them kind of honorary places in the uh, exhibition and also to show the fact that there were so few female artists in the collection. And here you, here's all the, it's Christopher Karl, Eva, Svante, Thor, Eva, Gideon, Arne, Bertil, Andrea, Rabbe, Sven, Arvid, Olle, Isaac, Erik, Sean, Johan, Bror, Karl, Kristen, Axel, Johan, Kurt, Kelly, Kolvitz, Karl, Birger, Sigurd, Axel, Emil, Vigot, Torsten, Folke, Alf, Olaf, Karl, Tycko, Inge, Kurt, Birger, Jorun, Sitjen, Mor, Jon, Holger, Henrik, Sten, Siegfried, Jens, Gustav and Sten. Um, and here you can see the self-portrait, so got this a bit light in here. But, um, and, the, and through inviting the viewers to take their own self-portrait, I also kind of wanted to see a little bit how many different people are visiting the art museum, and are there more female visiting the art museums than male, and uh, what different cultural background do they have, and uh, uh, so it was a, a way to expand the collection in a large variety. <coughs> um, and here you can see a close-up of uh, some of the portraits. Um, and also I started to think about what is a self-portrait today? Is the self-portrait when we use the um, phone camera? Is that our new way of creating a self-portrait compared to what it used to be? Um, and why do we feel the urge to upload all these images? Uh, and at this time, a few years earlier, this like the selfie started coming out, so there's a lot of selfies, and uh, is that the new self-portraits and how we are controlling our self-image and how we represent ourselves continuously in social media? So it was also a comment on that, what the self-portrait is today. Um, Um, while at the museum I also had a workshop with the teenagers where they could use the cameras and investigate them and photograph themselves in, um, in the museum space. And also one thing with the camera was that to borrow a camera you had to give your mobile phone in at the entrance. So in return for your mobile phone you got to borrow the camera and take your own uh, self-portraits. So there's kind of a deal there going on, so you couldn't actually use your mobile phone camera 
why we're visiting the exhibition. Um, <coughs> here you see uh, some images of the cameras. <coughs> Because um, also, like one day when I was there, um, the, a group of school kids <coughs> went up to the museum uh, visiting with their teacher, and uh, they were all like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it was very obvious that they were not actually experiencing their art through their eyes, but more through their phone, because they all was constantly with their mobile phones and asking me if. I was the artist and that was a very big thing for them, the fact that I had made this art piece and they were like, can we photograph you? And I was like, of course you can, as long as I can photograph you. So they then gave me permission for me to photograph them at the same time. Um, so that is a little bit of the background of the um, um, project. And now you will be allowed to use these cameras. and. Um, so, with the help of these cameras, we want you to further explore the concept of a mirroring image, a conduct and conductive photography, where you... Oh no, I've forgotten my... Yeah, uh, I did have my uh, reflective water bottle, but uh, we can uh, demonstrate. You can, for example, photograph through each other. Is your camera on? Yeah? Can you see me in the... Yeah? <laughs> so the mirror aspect can also work as a viewfinder um, for the camera itself. And we want you to investigate the role of the photographer as an observer in relationship to the observer and the subject of what lies within and beyond the frame. So, um, if we divide you up into two groups, of one who wants to participate, and you are allowed to go outside in this lovely weather and find reflective surfaces or other surfaces to photograph with the cameras and with each other, um, with these cameras. Is there any questions? I wonder it's so serious. <laughs> Tell us about how long we should spend outside and what happens next. After you, um, after you take in the photographs, we'll go into the room behind the wall with a beautiful mirror. And then we have a little printer, so we will print some of the images, and we will have a discussion of the images, how you felt taking these photographs, are you in the photographs, who is the observer, does the fact that the uh, camera can't show you the image give you a different experience, does it give the camera more agency than a normal? Camera. So it's more like an analog camera where you can't actually see the image that you are taking. So you kind of have to guesstimate while you're using it. And the lens is uh, this way out, so the text should be facing you if you want to take a photograph out. And I don't know what time. Sorry? If you want to take a conventional photograph. Yeah. Um, so maybe like. 40 minutes? How does that sound? Yeah? And we also have a sign release forms that you have to sign because as when you use these cameras, the cameras belong to the camera. Uh, and they might be used in a publication or an exhibition, depending. Uh, and I also have a publication that I will show you afterwards with cameras from that was taken uh, at the museum while uh, this exhibition was up. So who would like to be part of using the special cameras? Yes, well? <laughs> Maybe we can split ourselves up. One half of us go towards the front of the room, one half of us go towards the back of the room. Yeah? Yeah? Easy, easy way to split up. <laughs> no? <laughs> No, you get to keep on this Well, you can just say it. Thank you.
Skulle du nå til fotografi? Ja, det får vi. Ja, det får vi. Det er ikke så lenge. Det er ikke så lenge, men jeg tenker at jeg får utfordre meg selv. Skjønner du hva jeg mener? Ja. Utfordre meg selv. Ja. Printet nei. Skal vi Det är så. Han hanterade det på en sån. Det är alltså 